everybody. Welcome to Get Good Golf. Welcome to the channel. I'm going to do something a little different. I've actually read about this and I've researched it a little bit. I'm going to take my single plane swing. I'm going to still set up with the single plane swing kind of set up with the straight front lead arm. I'm going to set up like this so that this is in line with the club. But I'm not going to take the club back like I normally do. I'm going to combine stack and tilt with the single plane swing. I, I see that some people do this. I've, I'm on some groups like on Facebook and whatnot, and I've seen that there are a few people here or there that have actually combined two different methods and really made it work for them. I was playing around with this the other day, and it, it kind of seems like it is going to work for me because when I set up with a single plane swing like this, I feel that my club and ground interaction is different all the time. I feel like sometimes I hit it fat, sometimes I hit it thin. Um, I can never really quite return to the same place. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up in a single plane swing, but I'm going to follow some of stack and tilts methods where, first of all, I'm going to leave the weight on my front foot like 80-90% and I'm going to cover the ball. When I go back, my weight's going to stay on that front foot more. I'm not going to really shift to my left side. It's going to hopefully eliminate some swaying, and it's going to keep me covering the ball. And I'm going to follow the thing that they also do. Like, I've been watching that guy, Segudo Golf, uh, which... He has an amazing YouTube channel. I highly recommend Segudo Golf. The guy is so entertaining. Um, but he says, you know, put the shoulder down, and that kind of starts the backswing. So if I put the shoulder down, I'm moving the club back without even turning my wrist or arms at all. The club face, the club face is still pointing at the ball until I get here, and then it's a very similar it's a very similar position to what single plane swing teaches where you got this non-rotational trail arm that's coming into the ball. So if I put weight on the front foot, shoulder down to the ground, I come here and then I'm going to fire at the ball and create a divot past the ball. I want to hit the ball first and create a divot. When I do single plane swing the way it's normally taught, and I know I'm probably not doing it exactly right, but I seem like I don't get any compression on the ball at all. With this method, I'm going to set up single plane swing, I'm going to bring it back like this here, and then I'm going to fire through the ball and hopefully hit ball first, and then divot after. So this is a little experiment that I'm doing. I want to make more consistent solid contact, and I think this might help. It might not help. But that's what I'm doing in my simulator here. I'm, I'm digging it out of the dirt. I'm trying to find a swing that's going to really be right for me. And then I plan on practicing it and practicing it and practicing it over the winter to get ready for next season. Um, now you're going to see me hitting, ran I'm going to pick up random golf clubs here or there. I am not looking at distance whatsoever, so I'm not even going to tell you what club I'm hitting. I'm going to start with little half shots. And then I'm going to work up to maybe some three-quarter shots and then maybe hit a few a few full shots at the end of this. Uh, let's see how it goes. I mean, what I really want to do is I want to make solid contact. And I want to keep it within, you know, five yards of the middle line, left to right. Um, that's hopefully what I can accomplish today. Check it out. Okay, it's telling me I gotta wake up the device here. All right. So I'm gonna set up in a single plane swing like this. Then I'm gonna keep my weight on my front foot, shoulder down, and then fire through the ball. Okay, that felt pretty solid. Okay, that didn't calculate very well. It didn't pick it up. 
Okay, that didn't pick it up. Let me try another one here. Man, that feels really solid, but for some reason, it is not picking up the shots. Let me make sure I look back and make sure it says it's ready. Okay, that was a solid hit. Pulled it just a little bit. Pretty solid though, I'm pretty happy with that. It felt, it really feels like I'm compressing the ball. Okay, that's right down the middle. I haven't hit a ball that solidly in a long time. So again, single plane, single plane swing setup, stack and tilt motion, weight on the front foot, lead shoulder down, then firing through the ball, creating a divot after the ball. Man, that is solid, solid. And that's like a, that's like a little half three quarter swing. Solid hit. That's right down the middle. Okay, that was, I'm gonna disclose what club that was to you. That was a little half shot compressing the ball. That was a seven iron. 150 yards, and I wasn't even swinging it full at all. That's promising, guys. That's really promising. Okay, that was a little left. I hit it a little thin, but I still compressed the ball. You know, that would be left of the green if I was aiming at a green. Um, more, more of like a worm burner kind of shot. I got a little handsy with that one. It's pretty solid. I don't think that went as far as 150, but it's right down the middle. I felt it jump off the club face. I really did. It, it, I'm really compressing the ball way better than I was. 134 yards, a little half shot. I'm going to switch to a different club here. What do we got here? Yeah, I'll hit this one. Dude, that was hit thin, but it should be straight. Not bad. Okay, that was pretty solid. Pretty solid. Little draw. Little right of center. Not bad, I'll take it.
ground a little bit before the ball, but again, I'm compressing it though. I mean, I'm, I'm hitting it solid. It's jumping off the face. Let's hit a few irons here, a couple. Okay, so single plane swing setup. Stack and tilt takeaway. That was pretty solidly hit. You know, I'm accomplishing one thing here. I'm hitting the ball first most of the time. Um, I'm ordering one of those, one of those impact, one of those impact boards that leaves an impression as to where your divots being created. I think that that's really going to help me with this. I'm getting it on Amazon. I'm sure it's going to take a few weeks to get here, but I'm going to be definitely doing some videos with me using that because the goal here is, the goal is to take the divot past the ball. I want to hit the ball first, divot past the ball. It's way different than what I've always done all my life. I've always been a sweeper of the ball. Sometimes I'm, I'm coming up behind the ball and hitting behind it. I have to kind of time it just right to be able to hit the ball first. I don't want to do that anymore. I want to come up and I want to come down right on that ball, right there. Kind of like that. You know, not bad for half a half pitching wedge. At least I got the direction of the ball flight down and I'm hitting it solid. You know, that was a little three quarter pitching wedge. I know I got another 30 yards in me with that. All right, guys, let me know what you think. Can this help me? It seems like it's gonna help me. I'm gonna practice this. I'm going to practice on taking ball contact first. Uh, I'm going to set up the same way as I do with the single point swing, and I'm going to use the stack and tilt way of going, taking it back, shoulder down, weight on the front foot, fire through the ball, create a divot after the ball. That is going to be my new go-to practicing. Let me know what you think. Comment below. Can this help me? Has anybody else ever done this? It's okay, in my opinion, to combine two different swing methods together. You gotta find the swing that works right for you and that's what I'm trying to do. Please, if you don't mind, hit the thumbs up button. Leave a comment if you have any questions or you got a comment for me. Let me know what you think of what I'm doing here and uh, I will see you next time. Thanks a lot.